So class, welcome back to another lesson in creative writing, where we will be talking about characters, conflict and crisis, or who on earth does what in your story, and maybe why. Interesting, right? So, let's get into it. So, first of all, we have your characters. We have, and just to look at this, these are different types of characters that you will see here and that you will also use we have first of all we have the protagonist your hero your main character that you have in your story then following that we have the antagonist the enemy of the hero simple enough right yeah and then around that we have some foil characters that helps the reader understand the protagonist or maybe the antagonist as well who knows that's up to you uh, but basically those are like your side characters that are in the story, but it's not really about them. Uh, we have, and I want you guys to try to create individuals. Just don't just give them like a specific type, such as tough guy. Uh, I want some depth to your characters, and you can achieve that by. And that we're coming to that when we're looking at crisis and stuff like that later on, but. Try not just to make a stereotypical figure, unless you really, really want that, of course. But try to like challenge yourself to build <clears throat> build a character that has some more depth. All right. And I also want you just to think about that characters drive the plot forward. We mentioned this last time when we talked about the plot and the setting. So the characters' actions reflect what the plot is. So basically, when you create your characters, make sure that you remember that your characters are the ones whose actually the story is about. You've set your plot, yes, but the character driving it, well, it's the people you're creating in your story. Let's carry on, shall we? So here's some examples of characters. Uh, on the top here, you can see Aladdin. Sorry for the resolution, guys. It's just going to be this way. I'm sorry. Uh, but we have Aladdin. That's your protagonist, your main character. The hero of your story. Below him, we have the genie. Kind of a comical relief, really. But he would be a so-called foil character. Someone who's used to understand Aladdin more. Because, and we're getting to that, uh, why we use the genie to understand Aladdin. And uh, on your right side of the screen, there's Jafar. Good guy, right? Yeah. Uh, he uh, would be your so-called antagonist, the enemy. And this is very clear when you look at these very clear examples. We have the good guy, we have the bad guy, and then we have the people around. There's a lot more examples from Aladdin, but we're just sticking to the genie here. So moving on to the conflict and that can of course be a conflict between two characters uh, and how those characters resolve these conflicts but the conflict itself is something that would create interest in your story and is there to help build your characters maybe how a character battles depression that could be something uh, and as you see demonstrated by the pictures here and the example text on the right is that Aladdin has an internal conflict who is he is he a street rat or and who he is and who he acts like he acts like a prince and he does this by help of the genie so the genie helps him achieving like the goals that he wants to reach but this is a conflict inside of him and an identity crisis so a conflict of identity in his life and that's just to create some depth to this character who is he really because is he how he acts or is he the guy who grew up on the streets right let's move on to crisis and what is a crisis um basically it could be a breaking point between two characters it could be something used to push a story to a climax and usually leads to the res uh, resolution of the story and as an example there's a conflict between the genie and Aladdin when Aladdin does not help the genie to freedom because of his own greed and he wants to keep his wishes for himself for those of you who don't remember 
uh, Aladdin frees the genie, he gets three wishes. He has those three, and he uses what the first and the second one to try to like go rich and famous and get the girl, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then he takes he's supposed to take the third one and free the genie, but he doesn't feel that he's achieved his goals. So then he tells the genie that no. I'm keeping you around. And that's a conflict. That's the crisis. And the only reason that Rihanna is in the middle of your screen right now is because the genie wanted to break free. Haha, <laughs> fun. Really, fantastic. So, let's carry on. Um, so, how should you guys work with this? And here you can see a little, a little scheme, a little schematic of how it could look. Uh, you have your protagonist on top here, you see Aladdin. Then you move down to the right, you find your antagonist. And below that, there's a crisis and a conflict between the protagonist and the antagonist. It could be like that, yeah. And then you have your foil character. Maybe there's a crisis between these two characters. Uh, and as you can see on the left, that is the setting where Aladdin tells the genie, I'm not setting you free. But for those of you who know the story, you know that what happens more on the right, that a genie says, I'm free, that's where the story ends. That's how this conflict and the crisis is how they resolve. That's where it ends. So this is how you can build like your own characters. Remove the ones that I've written here and then put your own in. This is how you can think about it. This is just an example. You don't have to do it this way. But it could be like this. But we're not entirely done here, because you did something last week as well, right, yeah? You have to combine with the plot and setting. So, when you've done the plot and setting as you did last time, now you're creating the characters who's going to act all of this out. So have these like next to each other and see, alright, so now I know that I wanted this to be about, well here, Rhythm Victorian London, you can see that these two here, if I'd taken Aladdin and put it in the plot and theme or setting that I've been trying to use from last week, then it wouldn't make any sense. So then you have to rethink. So does what I've made here with my characters make sense in relation to where I want them to be and what I want them to act? Maybe you can't have let's say, a um, someone uh, living in the 21st century acting out a story in Victorian London. Or maybe you can, if that's your setting. Time traveling, that could be something, right? That could be something about your plot. But that is up to you. Now I'm making it difficult for you. But as the, what I want to say here is, when you see these two like schematics in front of you, they don't match right. Try to create something that matches, that seems logical and natural to you. And that's my advice. So, good luck in your next class, where you will be working with your characters, your crises, and all things related. See you later.